Hey y'all, how you doing? Hope everybody's doing well today. Eh, man, it's been... Okay, I gotta give you a little bit of inside baseball here, what's going on in the background. I surfaced my spoil board the other day, and I didn't think it through. I didn't follow through with some things that I should have followed through. So... When it came time to, uh, I got it surfaced, everything worked out beautifully. The tramming is primo. Then, because of where I live here in Southern Oregon, it, you know, we have, we have two seasons. We have blistering summer and we have rain. So the humidity stays up above 80 to 90% and gets into 100% on occasion. And it's to the point where I have to seal this spoil board because if I don't, the MDF, especially that nice freshly milled surface, is going to do nothing but absorb moisture and swell and just basically negate everything I just did to smooth that out. Normally, I use Zinzer Seal Coat on my spoil board to seal it up, which is a shellac bay sanding sealer. After I got it smoothed out and everything was great, got it surfaced, I went to go grab my seal coat and realized I was out of it. Well, I couldn't wait. It was already late enough in the day I couldn't wait. So the long and short of this was I ended up using vinyl sanding sealer, which is fine. It won't react with anything. It just reeks is the problem. It is absolutely disgusting in here. <laughs> That's been, it is uh, cured for about two days now and uh, it's better than it has been, but oh my God, does this stuff stink. So I'm sitting here in the fumes, just kind of getting foggy eyed. So if it looks like, you know, I just bit into a lemon or something like that, that's what's going on. It's like, oh man, this stinks. But anyway, so enough about that, what's going on. Um, today is basically the Q&A on this morning's video, which was um, importing an SK. P model from it will excuse me importing the vectors from an X SKP model into uh, VCarve Desktop, VCarve Pro, or Aspire. I thought I said that earlier in the uh, video, but I'm not exactly sure that I did because I did have a question on it. But no, you don't have to have Aspire to do this. It works in VCarve Desktop and VCarve Pro the same way. The only software I'm not 100% certain about is uh, Cut2D because I've never used Cut2D Desktop or Pro, so I don't know if you can import the vectors. I would assume that you can, but um, I, I, I'm not 100% certain that you can uh, import the vectors from a SketchUp model in Cut2D. That's why I didn't say that because I don't know it to be true. Um, I did have one question from, um, well, two questions actually from Rick French who posted over in the comment section on the video. And I'll answer the second question first. He asked if anybody had done a series of SketchUp videos that went into as much detail as I go into in VCarve. And I have to say that a, there are a ton of SketchUp videos out there. But I have to say that probably the best series that I have seen on using SketchUp was done by Jay Bates a few years back. And he does almost everything in SketchUp. He might plan his meals for a week in SketchUp for all I know. He uses SketchUp a lot. And he did like, there's like 50 videos in his SketchUp series. And I put a link to that series directly to the playlist 
uh, in the description of this morning's video and in this live Q&A. So if you're still kind of a little bit unsure on SketchUp, Jay will get you going. Believe me, he really did an excellent series. So more specific to this video this morning, um, Rick asked, and I see Rick's out there. How you doing, Rick? Doing just great here. Just a little tired, but hey, more on that later. Um, the other question he asked was, how am I going to do two different thicknesses in the same job setup? Because if you recall, um, let me bring up SketchUp here. Well, no, I'll bring up uh, Aspire, rather. And we'll get into that. And here we go. This front rail here and this front rail here are both quarter inch material and the rest of these are half inch thick material. How am I going to do this all in the same job setup? Well, not to do any spoilers or anything like that, but um, that is going to be in the next video because we're going to set up sheets and uh, go from there. And you'll see the magic when uh, I do that uh, in that video, Richard. So it'll be, uh, it'll be a good one. Um, let's see. Michael Mazalik says SketchUp, importing SketchUp into Cut 2D Pro can be done. Okay. Terrific. Terrific. So, um, let's see here. Uh, I don't know if there were any other questions on what I presented this morning, but, uh, it's, it's fairly straightforward. The, the problem as I see it with importing from SketchUp into v, uh, cut 2 D V carve or aspire is not so much the process it's just the size and all the options on that form because the, the Vectric software has to know what you want to do. But if you don't know what each one of those individual choices mean, it can get real confusing real fast. So I kind of tried to walk through it. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, trying to get this project done for my wife and um, you know, um, it, it's just kind of a balancing act there. So I just drew that up in SketchUp real quick and thought, oh, here's the prime opportunity to make this video series. And what I plan on doing is um, this morning was part one on the next video in this series, which will be two weeks from now. I'll get into uh, breaking up that design into sheets some of them that I will cut on the CNC, some of them I won't cut. I won't, uh, you know, like I said earlier, the shelves, they're simple rectangles. I don't need to put that on the CNC and cut that. I can cut it on my table saw and, you know, a, a lot faster. And I'll probably end up doing that lower rail to keep cups from falling out of the shelf. I'll probably end up doing that on the uh, table saw as well because there's just no need for it. But what I have to do behind the scenes now is I got to get some walnut panels glued up for the back and I might have to do the sides as well. I'm not sure. What I'm doing with this is, okay, back up a little bit here. Some friends of ours who live here in town did a massive, very expensive kitchen remodel. And part of that remodel was they installed solid walnut hardwood flooring. About a week after the remodel was done, the ice maker on their fridge, the hose sprung a leak, and they didn't know about it for about three days. When they did discover the leak, half of the kitchen, the flooring had been damaged. So they ended up having to rip out all that walnut flooring and replace it. He then asked me, Mark, I got all this 
walnut flooring back out in the garage. Do you want this? And I was like, oh, heck yes. So walnut's expensive here on the West Coast because it all gets shipped from back east. So I dove on that faster than you could say boo and spent a little bit of time pulling nails out of it and everything. So I've got to glue up panels out of this free solid hard solid walnut. So that's what I'm going to be building this out of. So now I get to glue up panels and get everything ready to cut. Um, and if you have never machined walnut or cut walnut on a CNC router before, you're in for a treat. It, I mean, the, it machines beautifully. It it really, I mean, it, it. you hear the phrase cuts like butter. It really does. It's excellent to work with. It's one of my favorites. It's a tie between walnut and sapili. They both machine beautifully. So I'm basically what I'm doing right now is I am talking to fill in time while I'm searching for questions. Okay. I all Peleg wants to know what version of SketchUp do you use? I was using it a long time ago when it was still Google SketchUp. I was using it as well. I had, um, I believe it was SketchUp 8 that I was using. And then when I got my new computer, I was forced to, uh, as most folks know, Google no longer owns or controls SketchUp. They sold it to uh, Trimble, another company that uh, specializes in surveying equipment and surveying software. Well, when they purchased it, they changed a few things on it. And now it's SketchUp Make, which is fine. It's, it still works just fine. I think the graphics are a little clunky now, but other than that, it still works great. And I'm currently using um, SketchUp Make 2017. I'm, I know it's an old version. It's, gosh, it's very old. It's, what, five years old now. But I'm one of those, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of guys. So it still works for me. That's what I'm using. Um, but I do know that it, it will use, um, the Vectric software will import files from the current version of uh, SketchUp. So that's not really a, uh, a factor. So, um, and I all goes on to say, I even modeled my entire house with it before we started building it proved to be quite helpful. I think I mentioned in one of my shop shed videos way back, I modeled this shop shed in SketchUp too. And that I use that to place electrical boxes and lights and locations for doors and which type of doors and where my electrical panel was going to go and everything. I do a lot of work in SketchUp because it is very, very easy to use. And if you're doing construction type drawings or if you're doing assembly type drawings, uh, it works fine for me anyway, for the type of uh, construction drawing that I do. I Yeah, I could have done it in another, I could have done it in like AutoCAD or something like that, but I, I like to be able to build components and then put them in place and then see if I'm going to have any interference between parts or figure things out. So um, it does work. Adam Scott wants to know if I learn CNC, will I be able to go a fabulous mustache like yours? But of course, of course. So <laughs> uh, Michael says, as far as the stink is concerned, light up a cigar. I'm afraid to light anything in here right at the moment. It's not that bad, but it's, you know. Okay, uh, Larry Aldrich wants to know what brand of bits do I use in my CNC machine and will they work in a trim router? Um, I don't have any brand loyalty when it comes to bits. I mean, I have some by Amana. I have Bosch. I have Whiteside, I have CMT, 
I have Freud. I have all kinds of, I have uh, some RIP precision bits. I, I don't really have any brand loyalty, but everything that I'm using so far could be used in a trim router. Um, it's more or less, as James Pell says here, it's more down to if you have the right collets for your router. Um, I use a lot of quarter inch uh, diameter, shank diameter bits. But uh, I also have three eighths inch, one eighth inch, and half inch, and I just had to go buy collets to fit those. And even a six millimeter now, I have one uh, set of six millimeter bits for uh, uh, for inlays that I haven't got into uh, working with yet. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, walnut is outrageous. Fourteen dollars a board foot in Texas right now. Um, and I checked on it about. Well, it's been a couple of months back now. It's sitting at about uh, fourteen dollars a board foot for rough sawn uh, walnut four quarter, and S two at surface two sides is sixteen dollars a board foot. So to score some for free, that uh, basically all I had to do with this stuff, it messed up the finish. It turned the finish white on this flooring. So all I have to do is plane off that top, you know, 32nd of an inch to remove all that finish. Then I can flip it over and uh, plane off all of the, the grooves and the bottom of the stock and i end up with about five eighths of an inch usable material so i'm just going to plane that down to a half inch glue up my panels and uh be ready for it so we'll see what happens i have other walnut here but i'd like to stay out of it because it's s2s walnut surface two sides that is real close to 15 16 inch thick so almost a full inch thick. And I really don't want to try to plane that down because I don't have a bandsaw that'll resaw that. If I did, it wouldn't be an issue. But so I'm trying to avoid the need to resaw that uh, that walnut. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dwayne Ruthig says, I just tried to import a SketchUp 21, 2021 profile and got a warning message that it has to be 2019 or earlier. Ouch. Um, you might be able to go in and download an older version of uh, SketchUp. I don't know if they, I don't know if Trimble keeps older versions on their uh, website. I know they used to. So you could go in and uh, download the older free versions. Uh, but do send a letter to Vectric Tech Support. Do send an email to Vectric Tech Support. They may not be aware of that. And uh, I will do the same. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. Um, send a letter to uh, or an email to Vectric Support and let them know that you got that warning. They might be able to uh, uh, issue a patch. If you know Trimble has changed something in the uh, in in their file formats or what have you, so I was not aware of that. Um, uh, Bob Frail says SketchUp Eight is the last free version. Newer versions have a fee and are really complicated for architectural applications. Um. Go to Jay Bates page to get the link for the free version eight. As I said, I'm using Trimble SketchUp Make 2017 and it works just fine. Now I do have SketchUp 8 on another computer, but um, I just haven't I haven't needed it. So I don't know. Let's see. Um let's see, Russell Faraday. It says, I have a 3D model to carve, three-sided, 
that is 200 millimeter in Z, my machine has 260 millimeter Z. Can I stop VCAR Pro carving more than 25 millimeter? So my collet does not collide with the stock. Mm, you, man, that's a toughie simply because, you know what, Michael may be your man on this simply because that is one of the things you have to take into consideration when you're using a 3D carve. Um, that gets into model height and what have you. I know you want to cut something that is 200 millimeter. What's the, what's the length of your bit? Um, wow, that might be something to look into. Wow. I, yeah, because... I don't know that you can stop it from carving that last 25 millimeter. I think you would just have to adjust the model thickness to get that. Am I right there, Michael? So, uh, let's see. As far as a vid, no, I don't have a video that covers that, uh, Russell. Um, Steve Russell, a way off topic question. Do you have a video on tiling? No, I do not. But that's one of the videos that I plan on making. It's, it's up there in the list. That's one of the videos I plan on making this year. So watch this space. It's coming. So, uh, Dwayne says, you simply choose which format to save it and it works. Okay, I'm assuming we're talking about the SketchUp uh, file issue. But still, Vectric does need to know that there's an issue importing uh, SketchUp 2021 files. They do need to know that. So maybe they can come up with a, uh, with a uh, workaround or with a uh, patch that will import. Uh, Martello Ballone says you can still get SketchUp 2017. Yeah, I'm not recommending that you do that. I'm just telling you that's what I use. If obviously, if you're using SketchUp 2021 Pro, you have paid for that. You don't want to go back. But uh, Brandon uh, Connell, Brendan, excuse me, not Brandon. Brendan Conway says, uh, check in the save as drop down. You should be able to save as an older version. That that is handy, but still, uh, it is a uh, it still is a something that Vectric needs to be aware of. Uh, and B Todd Cox, um. Steve Russell says CNC Nuts has a good video on tiling. You know what? You're absolutely right. Uh, CNC Nuts Peter Pasuelo has an excellent video on tiling, and I it just totally skipped my mind. So I've just written myself a note to go over to his channel, find that video, and I'll put a link in the description of this video after we're finished live here. Um, so that's um, the, the excellent point. Thank you. Um, Michael Mazalik said, uh, add a Z zero plane. I would need to see the file. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, that was uh, Russell Faraday. You know, um, a lot of things are so file dependent that it's hard to give a blanket answer because some things can be done. Some things can't. For instance, I don't know which version of, uh, of the software you're using, but there is a new feature in version 11, Russell, that will allow you to break up a 3d model into segments so that you can import something big like that and, set it up to cut certain things at certain times, uh, if that makes any sense. 
I have not used that feature yet. Vectric has a video on it. And basically, Todd uses an example of a 3D model of, I think it's a seagull standing up, and he imports it, he imports it into segments, cuts those segments out, and then once those segments are cut, he puts them together. But like he it, it's a way of handling, excuse me. It's a way of handling a model that creates undercuts because like the legs of this bird that he has standing there, he separates that off and that's a separate segment that's going to get cut over here. Then the body over here, then the head over here and the beak over here. So we can cut out all those parts and assemble it and have that full model. So it's pretty cool, but I have not used it yet. Okay, I all says uh, SketchUp Make 2017 is the last version of SketchUp Make. After that, there is either SketchUp Free, which is web-based, or the paid pro version. Okay, so there you have it. Um, I'm not going to cast dispersions on Trimble or Google, but SketchUp was an absolutely fabulous, fabulous program when Google owned it. The 3D warehouse was populated with all kinds of models. Um, it, I mean, there was a gentleman over in the UK, I think he was, he went through deck by deck and modeled the entire Titanic from stem to stern, as I said, deck by deck from the top of the funnels all the way down to the lowest level in the bilges. It was truly glorious. And I don't know how long he worked on that. When Trimble took it over, Basically, about two years after the transfer, they eliminated every model in the old 3D warehouse that was not made in Trimble's version of SketchUp. So all of that is gone. Everything that was there before. And all of the models that are there now are the, were made on the Trimble version. So... I don't know about compatibility with the old stuff, but I know I had several old models up on the 3D warehouse back in a former life when I was designing and making like uh, camp trailers, teardrop trailers and things like that. Uh, they're gone. Uh, I have my copies, of, you know, on an old hard drive, but what can I say? Um, and I all says there are also, there is something called SketchUp studio, which I'm not sure what it is exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I've never heard of it. I have never heard of it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, B Todd Cox says, don't let CNC nuts video let you avoid doing a tiling video yourself. I won't. I, I do plan on doing it because I, I will have a project coming up. That's going to require me to do some tiling. So, you know, it's, it's, Partly to do that video. Um, it's also partly selfish because I have to do it myself. But I've got to learn to do it, do a few tests. And uh, this is a tip for all you folks out there who are getting into this. I go get on my local Craigslist and I hit the free section and I look for scrap wood that's headed for the landfill then I, if it's still available, I go get that scrap wood. I have no philosophical issue at all with cutting up and destroying a piece of wood that's headed for the landfill. I can, I will get that and practice on that kind of material. And if it works, great. If it doesn't work, off into the burn pile it goes. It keeps it out of the landfill and it uh, keeps me from going out and buying good wood that someone else can use 
just to carve up. I mean, when I was learning my first CNC router, I can't tell you how many old fence boards I carved up learning the CNC, learning the software, but that's okay. You know, it just, it's old wood that's headed for the landfill. Why not use it up? Um, that's what I'll be doing with uh, tiling, get it perfected because I'm the kind of person that I need to know what I'm doing before I presume to try to show somebody else what I'm doing. So, but that is coming down the pike. I will be doing a tiling video. Uh, let's see. Uh, question on nesting. How does it work and does it consider grain orientation? I have not done any nesting yet. I've done a little bit, but not much. It does not automatically take into account grain orientation. Uh, the software doesn't care about grain. You have to take that into account. And when you do nest something, you have to tell it which direction to orient. You should have all of your, your parts oriented in the direction with respect to that grain that you want. And then when you go to nest, it'll, there's a check mark there about turning, rotating it to, for the best fit. You make sure that's unchecked. You want to leave it in the orientation it's in. You just want to get everything as close and as tight and get as much use out of that material as possible. But, um, yeah, the software does not take into account grain orientation at all. You have to do that. So, um, okay, James Pell says, does Vectric software need, need all parts of a SketchUp model but be separate components in SketchUp? Um, no, it does not need all of the parts. It does need them to be separate components. Because that's what it's going to go down and look for. It's going to look for those components and the vectors that make up that component. And let me get back in here into Aspire. And I'll show you here. Boing. Oops, I didn't do it. You got to click the button mark. There you go. Okay. For instance... On these bottoms, and I kind of confused myself when I went back and watched it, on these sides here, it created two sets of vectors because that's what was involved in the shape. It made this outline here, the, the full outline, that was one surface. But then it also made this outline here, which was the bottom, the inside surface of the shelf, and then this one here, which was the inside surface, and then this down here, which was the inside surface. If we look at that side in SketchUp, we have this surface, and it took this outline as the vector, but then since this dado goes all the way through the side, it considered this portion up here as one surface, and then this portion down below it as another surface, and then this portion down below that as another surface. So it imported it all. Well, that's why I had those duplicates that I had to go back and get rid of. I said in the video, they're semi-duplicates because they're not exactly duplicates. Duplicates would be two of these or two copies of each of these there were no duplicates, but I had this vector here behind this one, then this vector here behind this one. Now, as to your question on um, do you need all of the components? No. Y you can, let's say, copy this component to another layer and then when you get into Aspire or VCarve, whichever, and you go import vectors, come on, poor old laptop, 
And I go to, no, let's go to, oh, I put it on my desktop. That's right. Uh, D shelf, T shelf SKP open. When you go to import that, you would import only the visible data on selected layers. And then you would choose that layer. So if I didn't want to do all seven parts, I would copy, let's say that side onto a new layer, name it layer one, and then only import visible data on the selected layers. Then I would check layer one down here. So you do not have to import the entire model. That, that is an option. And if you, it just depends on how you set up the model. If you, if you model in different layers, and a lot of people do, you, I just didn't with that little one. Um, you could just import the components from that layer. Uh, let's see, does Vectric project needs all part of the model in SketchUp to be separate components? Yes, it does. It does need it to be a separate component. So, and I model that way anyway, you know, because it's just easier for me. Like for instance, I made a side uh, of the, I made one side of the model. Then I copied with one over and then flipped it along. I think it was the red axis. And I had two sides that were mirror copies of each other. Uh, Lewis Denton, thank you very much for using the super sticker. You rock, you rule. I really do appreciate it. More than you'll ever know. But uh, yeah, uh, all I do when I, going back to uh, James Pell's question, all I do is when I create a shape like that side, I'll draw the shape out, then use the push-pull to extrude it to the correct thickness, select all of those vectors, tap the letter G on the keyboard, which creates a component, make sure the check mark is replace vectors or replace object with the finished component and click OK. And then it's a component. Then if I have any editing to do, you have to right click on that component, select edit component. Then you can do your changes, push, pull or resize or do whatever. But yes. So uh, John Thompson says, I use old two by fours playing down to run my guitar neck profiles before I use good maple. It's an excellent way of doing that too. I mean, again, like I said, I have absolutely zero uh, philosophical issue with cutting up a piece of material that's destined for the landfill. I'd much rather do that to keep, number one, keep it out of the landfill. Number two, that's one more two by four down at the big box store that somebody who needs it has available to them. You know, my needs are very simple. And let's be honest, you can find some good stuff on the free section. I mean, I have found um, cabinet doors, solid wood cabinet doors. I found drawer fronts. I have found all kinds of stuff that's good usable material. A lot of times you'll find leftover solid hardwood flooring. A lot of times you'll find pieces of laminate flooring and don't discount laminate flooring. For instance, John, if you want to make templates for your necks to do handwork for guitars, uh, laminate flooring is excellent material to make templates out of. It, it really works good. It's dimensionally stable. It's not going to warp and twist like a solid wood. So, you know, there there is a lot to be said for some of this stuff that you can grab for free that somebody else is going to throw away. I mean, I, I tell everybody I'm Scottish, so I'm naturally cheap. It's in my DNA, but I just, I just don't see throwing something out that somebody else can use. So if they're going to offer it up for free, I'll surely take it. So, uh, Russell Faraday says, I love carving reclaimed timber. So do I. Uh, steel bolts in some wood reacts with tannic acid. And after a few decades, 
produces beautiful blue-black stains along the grain. Oak has a lot of tannic acid. Yes, sir, it does. Now you get that black staining. Um, here on the west coast of the U.S., uh, and I keep going back to fence boards, but it's a great example, um, we use a lot of cedar because it's cheap, it's fast-growing, it's been plantation grown here on the West Coast for forever. Um, years ago, when the timber industry was king out here, it was part of the uh, contract when there were there was a timber sale through the Bureau of Land Management or the Forest Service that for every tree the timber company cut down, they had to replant two. So they figured natural attrition, because not all the saplings were going to survive, they figured at least half would, and they have. And believe me, cedar is plentiful here, and it's fast growing, and it gets big. So getting these fence boards, that effect that you're talking about, I find that just using my big box store El Cheapo pressure washer, it'll take a lot of that gray off knock out a bunch of the you know rocks dirt debris what have you and without removing some a lot of that patina and a lot of that age and a lot of that staining cedar has a lot of tannic acid in it too and it reacts to steel so much so that when they cut it at the mill they can't pick it up with a forklift because the metal on the forks will stain that cedar black I mean, almost immediately. So, um, but the nails and screws that they hang these fence board with, you'll get a lot of those black streaks and nice patina in that too. So what I try to do when I'm working with it is I'll, I'll hit it with the pressure washer, number one, to remove any dirt and debris and take some of that, the old gray off of it. And then... What I'm using, I, I will plane the backside if I have to. And if I have to rip it, I'll cut along a back edge if I have to. And then mix up the good old vinegar and steel wool and apply that to the edges. And that'll uh, that'll turn that black and get rid of it. So um, let's see here. That's more than you wanted to know about that. But I also love using reclaimed wood because, again, I am cheap, but a lot of that reclaimed wood looks really good, really good. So uh, let's see here. Rick French says, after you transfer the design to V-Carve Aspire, is there a way to change the overall size by somehow linking the components? Um, I know that there is a way to scale up individual components all at once, but what you would have to do, in fact, I might do a little tip on this. Let me, let me look into that. Okay. Cause I don't want to say something now and it turns out it doesn't work. Let me look into that. And if I do find a way to do that, another little inside baseball here, uh, I'll do a short video on it, okay? Because right now, I don't have an answer for you. I want to make sure something works before I attempt it. But I don't want to do it on this file. So... Um, or are the options to either adjust each individual piece or make the change in SketchUp and start over? Um, again, let me look into that. And what I meant when I said um, make the change in SketchUp, I meant something major. Like if, for instance, on, let me, whoops, wrong one. Let me uh, share screen. And go back into SketchUp. For instance, if I made a change to the shape of the side or got rid of this arch and cut it lower or something like that, that's going to change the proportions. Um, 
I would have to then save this file and start over. But if we're talking about resizing in uh, Aspire, you know, I can resize right here. I don't have to go back and make that change into, like, for instance, I know this piece is, let's say, 14 and just a little over a half inch wide. If I decided I needed to make this 18 inches wide, um, because of the way I have it oriented, I could select all three of these. No, nope. no. Nope. Yes, I could. I could select all three of these and make that change to 18 inches wide. But as far as changing the proportions of everything else, like I said, let me work on that because I think there is a way, but I want to make sure I'm right before I do it, before I say to try it. So um, watch this space. That's what I'll say on that. <laughs> uh, Rob Sandstrom, howdy, Rob. That Generations Custom Creations said you can save as a 2019 file in 2021. Uh, he saves as 2019 all the time and import to Vectric piece of cake. Thank you. Good to know. Uh, so evidently, this is something to do with 2020 or later that Vectric has a problem importing. Like I say, they uh, they do need to know this because, you know, as other companies, as third-party companies um, change their file formats, et cetera, et cetera, Vectric needs to be able to keep up with it so that down the road when 17 and 19 are no longer options, they can still use that functionality. So I will send them an email and you should too. The squeaky wheel gets the grease and the more requests they get for something, the more likely they are to do it. And if it's something that's really simple and they can just, you know, create a patch and instead of uh, Aspire version 11.010, I'm now using 011. Good grief, I got the hiccups all of a sudden. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The they, they do need to know it so they can, you know, figure it out for themselves. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Larry Aldris wants to know, is there a good free program for making uh, scroll saw artwork? I'm sure you meant. I want to design multi-collapsible basket. Not that I am aware of. There might be. It's just that I'm not aware of it because I'm not a scroller. So I really don't know, Larry. Um, we can do a little bit of looking later on. But uh, I'm just not quite sure. So... Okay, um, let's see. We've been on for, yeah, not quite an hour. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a updates here and there and um, let keep you all in the loop on what's going on. Um, I'm still not quite able to go back to the once a week schedule for videos. I'm not going to change a thing about the live Q&As. There will be a live Q&A every weekend, every Sunday. Um, so that's sacrosanct. Um, the, I, I, I'm getting close though. I hope to go back to posting a video a week here very soon. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm also in the process of three or four different things as, uh, the, in the background here, the reason the walnut shelf came in before I finished the pirate was because um, this is a project that's been on the books for the wife for a couple of years now, and I got to get it done. Uh, she has added a design element to it that I'm not really at liberty to say just yet, but it could involve an epoxy fill. So it won't be completely and totally different. I will get back to the pirate. I do plan on carving and pouring that inlay. 
and there will be a cool thing about that for sure. Um, there is going to be a big change here in the shop pretty quick. And something that I wanted to talk to you folks about, I have resisted doing this mainly because I didn't really know how it worked, but I've kind of got a little bit more information on it. And that is YouTube shorts. This is kind of like the YouTube version of a Facebook story or an Instagram story. It's a video that's a little bit less than a minute long that you can, you know, if I have something small, uh, just a real quick video. And as I was talking about earlier, I could make a short video. I'm considering going ahead and making some shorts videos and posting them here and there as things come along. Because there are a lot of little tips and tricks involved in this software that don't warrant their own video. Case in point, I'll give you a good example. Let me share my screen here. And we'll go back into Aspire. Some folks know that you can create notes on a project. And let's see, we go up here to, is it under file? I'm trying to remember where it is. Notes. It's under the edit menu. You click notes. You open it up and it, it looks like this and you can write yourself notes. Um, let's see. Wall nut. And that's great. That's a note that I'm going to use walnut. Well, there's a little tip that you can use here and that is if you want this note to auto open when i load this file all i need to do is in front of my notes just hit enter on the very first line just enter period dot full stop whatever you want to call it and make sure that's the only thing on that line then when i click ok as it says right here when I click OK, that saved that note. Now, the next time I go to open this file, let me do it right now. Yes, I want to save that change. OK, I've just closed that file. Now, when I go to open that file, that note pops up. So it's just as simple as that, entering that dot and making sure that's the only thing on the first line will make sure that note pops up immediately when I open that file. And then what if I want to undo that? I don't want it to pop up anymore. I just backspace to get rid of that dot. Click OK. Then I'll have to, of course, save the file. Then I can close it. Come open it. And there we go. That note doesn't pop up. I can still go over to, oops, wrong one, notes and read it, but it doesn't auto pop up. It doesn't auto launch when I open the file. So it's little tips and tricks like that that doesn't warrant its own video, but it's something that I think, uh, you know, is just a, a cool little video. So what my question to you is, do you think little shorts like that have any value? And should I just post them on a regular schedule or just as I come up with one, go ahead and post it. So it'd be a spur of the moment thing. Which do you think that would be the better way to go? Because I can't guarantee that I, it's not like I have a bunch of these waiting in the wings. So, you know, if you think it's worth, then I'll do it. If you don't think it's worth it, hey, you know, I won't bother with it. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Rob says has a Rob says he has a video on tiling coming out next week in collaboration with Laguna. Perfect. So that that fits right in. All right. Perfect. Um, okay, overwhelmingly, yes, yes, shorts. Uh, please do post them as they come up. Okay. 
Uh, Jim Rocklin, I like the idea spur of the moment is good. Yes, it is. Okay. And uh, yes, on the shorts, whenever you have one, spur of the moment. Okay, terrific. I'll do that. Um, and here's the thing right here, Lewis Denton. Do they interlace with the videos so we can find them? What will happen is they will appear uh, in your uh, subscription subscriber feed, your subscriptions feed, and they will also appear on my homepage. It'll be just like an, any other video. It's just they're uploaded a little bit differently because they are shorts. So um, they fall under a different program and what have you. But anyway, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. And then maybe one week when I'm struggling for a video or I can't get it, you know, can't get it together to get a video, I can edit a bunch of shorts together and do one big tips and tricks video. All right. Okay. Um, but yes, the, you'll see them in your subscription feed. You will get a notification if you hit the notification bell, then hit it again and set that menu to all notifications. So, okay. Uh, putting them together in some sort of outline form so they can be easily referenced about the best I can do is put them in a playlist. And they'll be ordered. I have my playlist set up to where they're ordered from the oldest first. So if you start at the top, that's the oldest one. So they'll be in order of when I posted them. So, okay. So, yes, I'll get started on that. And uh, so my first one will probably be the one you just saw, the making a note auto open. So since you're here, you're ahead of the curve. <laughs> All righty. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, back out of here. Next live Q&A next week will be open Q&A. So if you have any questions at all about anything, um, go ahead and get them ready. Um, I'm going to try to pick out a little something to talk about. We'll see how that works out. Um, so... I am going to be working, again, still on that pirate. I'll be creating videos for it. But I've also got to get some panels glued up so I can get this shelf cut out so I can get her done. And uh, so other than that, again, I will put a link to Peter Pasuelo's tiling video down in the link, the description box of this video. If you are looking for... Uh, Google SketchUp instruction. There is already a link to Jay Bates' playlist of all of his um, SketchUp videos. And it's, believe me, it's well worth the time. SketchUp is a very powerful tool. It's an excellent program for doing this kind of modeling. And if you can just import straight away from SketchUp into VCarve without a lot of fuss and feathers, why wouldn't you use it? I mean, heck. Okay, Bob Hillhouse, you rock. You really do rock. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that super sticker. Uh, John wants to know when will part two be made. It'll be made sometime this week. It'll be posted not next Sunday, but the Sunday after that, because I've got a lot of things to do behind the scenes to make sure that I can go that far. You know, <laughs> I tried to do it all as one video. It was an hour and 20 minutes long. That's too long even for me. So uh, I'll pick up where I left off in the next video and that'll be two weeks from today. Okay. So thank you again, Bob. Thank you again. Let me scroll back up here and find it to Lewis. I really appreciate the super stickers. I appreciate everybody who has hit those donation links down there. And I appreciate everybody who has subscribed, everybody who has given me a thumbs up and all of you folks who keep coming back. And I really do appreciate you all more than you will ever know. Thanks again. And you all have a great Sunday and we'll see you next week.